Hello guys and welcome to the Vagus Empire faction overview for the mod Prophecy of Pandor version 3.9.4 and um, I'll be discussing with you the base points about the uh, Vagus Empire and I'll also be discussing with you the troop trees and their elite troops specifically which troops you should utilize as well as their faction order and their notable lords and their respective household troops I'll also be leaving stamps in the description and the comments section if you guys want to skip to a certain part of the video and I hope you guys enjoy this The Pecas Empire is ruled by Marius Imperator His uh, main town which he starts off with is Janus and he has Empire Guardian Knights as his household troop the Bacchus Empire also starts off by controlling three major towns, of which is Sez, Janus, as well as Ethos. The Bacchus Empire would be considered very close to the Rolox of the uh, native base game, um, just because of their very, very good crossbowmen. They actually have the best crossbowmen uh, among all the factions in their common tier. Um, they also have very decent infantry overall, they are not the best, but they are very decent. They are Empire Knights, um, they are not really bad, but they are not perfect either, so they are very good if you need that extra more cavalry in your game, but uh, we will still talk about them more in detail later on in the video. Now I'll be talking about their uh, troop trees and their best units that uh, you should utilize in your army. First off, um, I'm just gonna say that the Bacchus Empire is probably the most balanced, uh, has the most balanced troop tree in Prophecy of Pandor. They honestly have everything that you need. They have the cavalry, they have the infantry, they have the shock infantry, as well as very good archers, which are the crossbowmen. Um, however, let's just talk about the best troops that they have, which is their crossbowmen. Uh, they have very decent proficiencies, they are also very um, ammo efficient, so they are very good in sieges if you are attacking or defending. Um, just because they will not run out of ammo as quickly as other archers, which have a much higher um, rate of fire, so they will be spending their arrows very quickly and you'll have to retreat and go back in. Um, so, yeah, pretty much if you are gonna play Pax Empire, you really need to get a very big bunch of the Empire Crossbowmen. They are the best archers in the game, um, in competition with the Ravenstorm Rangers, but if you really like Crossbowmen, definitely go for the Empire Crossbowmen. You will not regret it. Uh, the Empire Crossbowmen can also handle themselves pretty decently in a melee fight. Um, using their Bavis, uh, their big board shields and their Empire broadswords, they are definitely not easy to take out. They have uh, decent armor, it's not the best, but it's very decent. So, um, you don't really want them getting into your infantry line and going to melee because then you will be wasting their ranged options. But um, in a fight, they can handle themselves pretty well against uh, cavalry or flanks. Uh, now I'll be talking about the Empire Legionnaires. Um, these are very, very decent infantry. They are not the best in Prophecy of Pender, but they are very good and they are very easy to uh, get a shit ton of because they are kind of low level, so they don't take a lot of time to uh, level up. So as I said, they can uh, you can amass a very big number of those guys in a very short amount of time. Uh, so, what are their bros? Um, they always come with shields, which is great for shield walls to protect your crossbowmen. They also come uh, equipped with uh, throwing weapons sometime, so it's very helpful to uh, get to like throw in some spears at the enemy before they go in one versus one, because it it really hits their um, their the enemy shields, which is easier than for the legionaries to get in and get the hits uh, much quicker and finish off. Um, their cons. Uh, not much really, just that they are not the best, however they are very decent, I would really recommend you use them, you will definitely not regret using these guys. And now the last elite troop of the Bacchus Empire that I will be talking about is the Empire Gladiators. 
Now these guys are um, situational, okay? They are not exactly bad, but they are not exactly good, so they are situational. Uh, a lot of time they don't come with shields, and even when they come with shields, it's a um, very bad steel shield. So if you are not an experienced commander and you don't know how to uh, micromanage shock troops like the Embar Gladiators, then I definitely recommend you just stick with the Embar Legionnaires because Gladiators take a lot of time and a lot of money to level up. So if you are not gonna micromanage them well, you will just be wasting your money. However, these guys have very decent proficiencies and they also come equipped with Sambar Embar Halberds, uh, which is good against cavalry, as well as Embar Greatswords, which is also good against cavalry. Um, however, the cons of these guys is that, as I said, sometimes they don't come with shields, sometimes they don't come with helmets, and their armor is just awful. It's legitimately awful. It's laser armor, it's just like just think that they are naked pretty much so I would suggest that you use these guys by um, putting them in a shield wall so that their Empire Legionnaire friends will be backing them up and you know when the cavalry rushes in they'll be able to stay at the back and get those hits in I mean the gladiators of course and they'll be able to um, just stay at the back and take cover behind their shield bodies that's the best way to use them in my opinion. They also come with uh, throwing spears, which as I said is very decent. But if you don't really like shock troops, then don't use them. You're not really gonna miss out on much, really. I would just say, like, maybe have uh, five in your shield wall of these guys. It, it's, it's, very, it's very much over. You don't really need a lot more than that. Uh, the last elite troop of the uh, Bax Empire is the Empire Cavalry, uh, and I'll just say it straight out, uh, don't use this troop, it's very awful, they are basically very bad legionnaires on horseback with crossbows, they'll be using their crossbows, taking a very long time to reload, they are not precise, it's just crossbows on horseback, it just doesn't work. Their prophecy, their prophecies are trash, their armor is trash, their horses are trash. Just stay away from them, never use them, unless there is like you're in a very early game and you see them in a prison stack, then grab them, why not? But any other time, don't use Empire Cavalry. However, we'll be talking about the Empire Knights, which is another troop which you can utilize in your army. The Empire Knight is the elite troop of the Bacchus Empire's noble line, so you need to actually be a vassal of the Bacchus Empire to uh, recruit some of these guys. Um, these guys come equipped with very decent horses, as well as um, throwing spears. However, they have a chance to come with a uh, much worse um, horse. Uh, that is not as much armored as the Empire Dark Stallion, but most of the time you will be getting um, they will be getting very uh, heavy horses. They have decent proficiencies, okay skills, uh, not the best skills, but kind of okay. So I would say these guys are like the second best noble cavalry troop tree, uh, standing with the Ravenstar Star Knight probably after the Sarleon Knight. So all in all. Um, it's it's good all-rounder, not bad at anything, not best at anything. So yeah, if you need some extra cavalry in your army, you go for these guys and you'll be fine. Now I'll be talking about the um, Bacchus Empire's faction knighthood order, which is the order of the Empire Immortals. Uh, I consider these guys to be the worst faction knighthood order out of all the other factions just because of their role in the field, they are pretty much Embar Gladiators, but better, and as we said, Embar Gladiators are situational, they are not really straight out super good infantry to use. However, these guys uh, are much better equipped, um, they have much better armor, but the thing is, a lot of times they don't come equipped with shields, which is just awful in Prophecy of Pender, because these guys will just get taken out by archers before they even approach anything and do any serious damage, so they are pretty much just a kind of a waste of manpower. And they upgrade from Empire Knights. 
lastly, I'll be telling you guys the best Bacchus Empire Lords that you should have in your empire, or at least the most notable ones, and uh, their respective household troops. First off, we have the best lords that you can have in your kingdom in Prophecy of Pandor, Agus and Legatus. Just because of his amazing Iron Circle Centurions household troop, these guys are beasts. They are basically Shadow Legion Centurions on steroids. Um, get this guy on your side, get him in your kingdom, and you will have a lot of fun with him. He also possesses the best reputation, which is upstanding. Clan Legatus, Cunning Reputation, and Radiant Class Plague Wardens as his household troop. Justice Dukes, Martial Reputation, and Empire Mortals as his household troop. Kairos Dux, Martial Reputation, and Shadow Legion Centurions as his household troop. Livius Dux, Bat Timbered Reputation, and Shadow Legion Marinus as his household troop. Sidonius Legatus, Pitiless Reputation, and Guardian Empire Knights as his household troop. Titus Legatus, Listic Reputation, and Knights of the Phoenix as his household troop. Varus Legatus, Good Natured Reputation, but no household troops to speak of. And this will be it for the Bacchus Empire Faction Overview. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you have any questions, please tell me down in the comments. And tell me what faction would you like to be featured next in the Faction Overview. And yeah, have a great day guys!